hello beautiful people i am back again doing another video for csec english b and this one is going to be the narration of the short story blackout by roger mays so if you want the whole story keep watching city was in partial blackout. The street lights had not been turned on on account of the wartime policy of conserving electricity and the houses behind the discreet Aurelia edges were wrapped in an atmosphere of exclusive respectability. The young woman waiting at the bus stop was not in the least nervous. In spite of the wave of panic that had been sweeping the city about bands of hooligans roaming the streets after dark and assaulting unprotected women, she was a sensible young woman to begin with, who realized that one good scream would be sufficient to bring a score of respectable suburban householders running to her assistance. On the other hand, she was an American and fully conscious of the tradition of American young women that they don't scare easily. Even that slinking blacker shadow that seemed to be slowly materializing out of the darkness on the other side of the street did not disconcert her. She was only slightly curious now that she observed that the shadow was approaching her. It was a young man dressed in conventional shirt and pants with a pair of canvas shoes on his feet. That was what lent the suggestion of slinking to his movements because he went along noiselessly. That and the mere suggestion of a stoop, for he was very tall. And there was a curious look as of a great hunger or unrest about the eyes. But the thing that struck her immediately was the fact that he was black. The other particulars scarcely made any impression at all as against that. In her country, it is not every night that a white woman would be likely to be thus nonchalantly approached by a black man. There was enough of novelty in all this to intrigue her. She seemed to remember that any sort of adventure could happen to you in one of these tropical islands of the West Indies. Could you give me a light, lady? The man said. True, she was smoking, but she had only just lit this one from the stub of the cigarette she had thrown away. The fact was, she had no matches. Would he believe her? She wondered. I'm sorry, I haven't got a match. The young man looked into her face, seemed to hesitate an instant, and said, his brow in perplexity, but you are smoking there was no argument against that still she was not particular about giving him a light from the cigarette she was smoking it might be stupid but there was a suggestion of intimacy about such an act simple as it was that call it what you may she just could not accept offhand there was a moment's hesitation on her part now during which time the man's steady gaze never left her face. There was something of pride and challenge in his look, and curiously mingled with that, something of quiet amusement too. She held out her cigarette toward him between two fingers. Here, she said, you can light from that. In the act of bending his head to accept the proffered light, he had perforce to come quite close to her. He did not seem to understand that she meant him to take the lighted cigarette from her hand. He just bent over her hand to light his. Presently, he straightened up, inhaled a deep lungful of soothing smoke, and exhaled again in satisfaction. She saw then that he was smoking the half of a cigarette that had been clinched and saved for future consumption. Thank you, the man said politely and was in the act of moving off when he noticed that, instead of returning her cigarette to her lips, she had casually, unthinkingly, flicked it away. 
He observed all these things in the split part of a second that it took him to say those two words. It was almost the whole cigarette she had thrown away. She had been smoking it with evident enjoyment a moment before. He stood there looking at her with a sort of cold speculation. In a way, it unnerved her. Not that she was frightened. He seemed quite decent in his own way and harmless, but he made her feel uncomfortable. If he had said something rude, she would have preferred it. It would have been no more than she would have expected of him. But instead, this quiet, contemptuous look. Yes, that was it. The thing began to take on definition in her mind. How dare he? The insolence. Well, what are you waiting for? She said, because she felt she had to break the tension somehow. I am so sorry I made you waste a whole cigarette, he said. She laughed a little nervously. It's nothing, she said, feeling a fool. There's plenty more where that came from, eh? I suppose so. This would not do. She had no intention of standing at a street corner drawing well with a black man. There was something indecent about it. Why didn't he move on? As though he had read her thoughts, he said, "'Tis the street lady. It's public." Well, anyway, she didn't have to answer him. She could snub him quietly, the way she should have properly done in the first the start. It's a good thing you're a woman, he said. And if I were a man? As man to man, maybe I'd give you something to think about, he said, still in that quiet, even voice. In America, they lynch them for less than that, she thought. This isn't America, he said. I can see you are an American. In this country, there are only men and women. You learn about that if you stop here long enough. This was too much. But there was nothing she could do about it. But yes, there was. She could humor him. Find out what his ideas were about his question anyway. It would be something to talk about back home. Suddenly she was intrigued. So in this country there are only men and women, eh? That's right. So to speak, there is only you and me. Only there are hundreds of thousands of us. We seem to get along somehow without lynchings and burnings and all that. Do you really think that all men are created equal? It don't seem to me there is any sense in that. The facts show it ain't so. Look at you and me, for instance. But that isn't to say you're not a woman the same way as I am a man. You see what I mean? I can't say that I do. You will, though, if you stop here long enough. She threw a quick glance in his direction. The man laughed. I don't mean what you're thinking, he said. You're not my type of woman. You don't have anything to fear under that heading. Oh, you're waiting for the bus, I take it. Well, that's it coming now. Thanks for the light. Don't mention it, she said, with a nervous sort of giggle. He made no attempt to move along as the bus came up. He stood there, quietly aloof, as though in the consciousness of male strength and pride that was just his. There was something about him that was at once challenging and disturbing. He had shaken her supreme confidence in some important sense. As the bus moved off, she was conscious of his eyes, quiet scrutiny of her, without the interruption of artificial barriers, in the sense of dispassionate appraisement, as between man and woman, any man, any woman. She fought resolutely against the very natural desire to turn her head and take a last look at him. Perhaps she was thinking about what the people on the bus might think. And perhaps it was just as well that she did not see him bend forward with that swift, hungry movement, retrieving from the gutter the half-smoked cigarette she had thrown away. If this video was helpful to you in any way, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. 
and look out for more helpful videos from past csec english